can and will be the Oscar Grant Foundation's, I mean the Oscar Grant Station. How many believe we can make that happen? Yeah, we can, if we pull together, we can make that happen. We have a young man who is coming now and he has been supporting this foundation since the beginning. Uh, every time I look up, he's here. He's supporting with his wonderful brothers. Uh, he is a minister in the uh, Nation of Islam and he is a gifted and phenomenal speaker as well as a man with a great heart for people. So at this time, would you welcome to the stage Minister Abdul Sabor Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I am a student of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you should know that we thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs, for his raising the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and for his gifting us with a man who represents his love to us. And that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's in their names. I'm honored to greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language. As-salamu alaykum. To the family of Oscar Grant. To Mother Wanda. To Sister Tantiana. To our grandmother. To the brothers and sisters of Wanda, aunts and uncles of Oscar, to the pastor that serviced their family there in Hayward, California, and to each and all that are here gathered on this historic occasion. It is certainly my honor to represent the truth taught by God and his servants as I strive to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to help every one of you. Ten years ago, when we learned of the murder of Oscar Grant, like many, in the opening moments, we had no idea what happened. We didn't know who Oscar and his family were. And on the morning of January the 3rd, before the video release of the horrific incident, men gathered in a special organizing effort hosted at the Olivet Institutional Missionary Baptist Church and its late great pastor that we thank God for, who hosted two years straight of town hall meetings. I want you to give a big round of applause in memory of the Reverend Gordon Humphreys. As we gathered, on January the 3rd of 2009, we gathered to meet on many issues. Our principal thought was we needed to organize men to address the issues that non-white men are confronted by daily here in Oakland and all over Northern California. The Warriors played last night and while many weren't so satisfied with the outcome, let's just take a look for a moment at the theme, the team, has operated under for many years. For many years, the Warriors have paraded the theme, strength in numbers. And so we gathered together on a Saturday morning. Gathered with us were activists from Stockton. Gathered with us were activists from Sacramento. Gathered with us were activists from San Francisco. Gathered with us were activists from Oakland. Gathered with us were activists from Fresno. And those activists, all male in that initial meeting, were men who were concerned with gentrification. Men that were concerned with toxic poisoning and uh, environmental racism in San Francisco. Men who were concerned with the prison industrial complex and the mass incarceration authored not by Republicans, but actually authored by Democrats, one of whom is running for president right now, Mr. Biden. And so as we gather to confront and organize ourselves around these issues, as I was driving home from that meeting, 
One of the brothers called me and asked, Brother, have you seen the news? Well, no, I have not. I was in the car. And he told me when I got home to pay attention to the news. And it was that night that a video taken by a woman on the BART train whose name should be remembered and whose efforts should be thanked. One of the themes I want to speak to as I open here is gratitude. We would not sit here as we are honoring the name Oscar Grant if a woman by the name of Katarina Vargas didn't take courage to pick up her cell phone to record its events, to secure those events, and to make those events known to the family and to the community of the horror that happened on January the 1st of 2009. Well, we certainly thank her. And in the days after her video became known, we went to our churches, our mosque, and our masjids on Sunday and did the thing that we normally do. But on that following Monday, my brother in San Francisco, you often see us together. We're like twins in the work for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You've known him as Minister Christopher Muhammad. We know him now as Minister Abdul uh, Rashidullah Muhammad. He called me and he asked the question, had I seen the news? He saw on the news one Latina sister who was standing in a BART station thoroughfare protesting what had happened to Oscar Grant. There had yet to be organized efforts made in the murder of Oscar Grant and then my brother Rashid Allah, then known as Christopher, he asked me a question. He said, isn't there a group over there? The black elected officials that you are a part of, what are black elected officials doing about the murder of Oscar Grant? And in that moment, the answer was nothing. Because they, like most, were satisfied looking at the news and sitting at home angry. You see, there's something that we suffer in our community that the enemy have raised us in such way that no matter what is done against us, we ought to never raise our heart and never raise our hand to fight with those who fight with us. So my brother asked me to call those whom I knew that we could meet and organize a meeting of those in leadership and activist worlds that we were able to reach. And on Tuesday, I believe January the 6th, a delegation of about 20 of us met in Olivet Church hosted by the Reverend Humphreys. We were joined then by several members of the body politic of Oakland. Some are here today, others are absent in this moment, but we certainly want to thank and I believe her absence, unless she's floating around, our councilwoman, Desley Brooks. Give her a big round of applause because there was something she did very unique in this challenge. As we met, we talked about what happened and knowing all we had was the videotape news footage, we didn't have access to the facts available to the government officials. So as we discussed how do we get at the facts? Sister Desley said, in an instant, I have the DA's phone number. I can call him right now and find out what it is that his office knows and intends and whether or not he can brief this group of community leaders over the horrific shooting of Oscar Grant. Well, of course, like DA's before him, his intention was to say nothing, and his intention was to do nothing. She pressed the envelope and said, this group needs to meet with you, or it's gonna be problems in our community. So then the DA said, okay, well I'll meet with two or three of you. There were more than 20 in the room. 
she held her phone up to the 20 on speaker and said, he said he'll meet with two or three of you and in unity, that entire group said, no, it's all or it's nothing at all. When it became nothing at all, it was determined in that moment that we were gonna take the whole group plus and have a press conference at the steps of the Alameda County Courthouse to make our demands for justice in the murder of Oscar Grant known. And when we were done with that, we were gonna make our way to the district attorney's office and make a demand that he allow us into those secret sanctums of what it is he intended to do in the murder of Oscar Grant. The DA was a little scared. He didn't want to meet with me. Our brother supervisor Keith Carson came from a budget hearing across the street that he was chairing at the alarm call of the district attorney, former Tom Orloff. He said that they called me because they were worried that you are outside of his office demanding the meeting. And they wanted for Supervisor Carson to calm the native black people down. He came into the area and asked directly, what do you want? He took into the meeting with him the legendary pastor of Allen Temple Baptist Church, Dr. J. Alfred Smith Sr. They met for a few minutes and agreed that in order to advance our demands, you had to bring myself into that meeting. When we approached that meeting, the DA said, okay, I'll talk, but I can't talk to all of those people out there. It's not safe. We said to the DA in the police station, you call a courthouse. We can guarantee your safety if you come to such a meeting. In fact, I said, if it doesn't fit here, open up a courtroom. We'll meet in an empty courtroom. He said, we can't do that. Then I said, we can meet at Laney College. And he said, well, we can't do that. I said, well, what kind of space do you have? He showed us a conference room. We gathered all those that remained who didn't go to Oscar's funeral. And we met in this conference room with men, women, and children who came for the sole purpose of demanding justice. Wow. Now, I brought an iPad with me because it has some notes on it and it's overheated. Are y'all all right? All right. We were overheated that day. But I wanted to make sure that we took a moment to thank as many as we can. Because Allah, the Quran teaches us, hates ingratitude. There's no way I could give all the names of those wonderful activists named and unnamed who played a critical role in bringing us to this moment. You need to know that Bart would not have permitted this mural and the city of Oakland would not have permitted that sign except that they saw the force of a community that had learned to love itself enough to demand what's in our own best interest. It took love. However, you should know, according to the Bible, God is love. So it not only took love, it took God. There were miracles happening in Oakland during that time. We could have never calculated that in one given year that the Congressional Black Caucus chairperson would reside in Oakland. We could have never calculated that at the same time that the state Black Caucus chairperson would reside in Oakland. We didn't know that Congresswoman Barbara Lee would be in place. We didn't know that Assembly Member Sandra Swanson would be in place. We didn't know that Supervisor Keith Carson and the Black Elected Officials Organization with faith-based leaders would be in place. We didn't know that organizers like Dorica Blackman and others, our brother Torhop, our sister Kat, and so many named and unnamed. Do you know how great it was to see a little uh, Asian sister, I say little because she's short, 
our sister Yvette Falaka, standing in the face of authorities waving guns and clubs at her, but without fear she challenged them for justice for Oscar Grant. There are so many named and unnamed heroes and sheroes. I want to thank Sister Ann Williams, whose home became the place of organization for those that gathered along with Jeffrey P., Reverend Buford, Gene Hazard, and others. And of course, my brother who made me get on Facebook, Brother Chuck Johnson, formerly of Soul Beat, because we discovered that in order to organize our people, we had to first communicate. Now let me say this in closing. To unite black people toward any cause requires revolutionary love. The Bible not only says that God is love, the Bible says that love is long-suffering. It says that love is patient. It says that love is not boastful and love does not envy. And whenever you rise among black folk that are in a barrel, we didn't put ourselves in the barrel. The system put us in the barrel and they left us arguing one with another whenever it appears that one of us appears to be rising out of the barrel. And you look up and like crabs, we start pulling down any that appear to rise before our eyes. I promise you, Huey Newton had opponents that were black. I promise you, Elaine Brown and Bobby Seal had opponents who were black. I promise you, Nat Turner had opposition that was black. I promise you that Denmark Vesey and Sojourner Truth, that they had opponents who were black. Well, why? Because the enemy and their rearing of us in America knew that when they captured our minds, that they had control of us. And they gave a lesson in a letter written by a man by the name of Willie Lynch, who said of us that he had a foolproof plan for the control of slaves. He said, take their differences and make them big. Show them their differences. Show them that there are Muslims standing in a church. Make them argue over who had the greatest amount of time at the microphone. Cause them dispute over who found the biggest rounds of applause. Make them argue over grant money. Not over Oscar Grant, but over grant money. Over which nonprofit would find their way to the good offices of city government. So the enemy knew, take the differences and make them bigger. So we worked out of love for justice. I close with this. In the Muslim program, our religion is really defined. It says, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. We want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or of color. Our call and cry for justice is because the state of California did not intend to give Wanda and Tatiana justice. The district attorney's office did not intend to give Tatiana and her mom justice. The state of California was going to do what it always does, and that is nothing. So I want to thank especially those that made their weekly pilgrimage to Olivet. Special thanks to the followers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, these sisters sitting in the garments in the hot sun. These brothers that are standing around offering whatever services that we can. They drove up and down the highway. We didn't ask the family for a dime. We gave them as many dimes as we could. We never made a demand and we never sought 
to cut a deal. The only thing we wanted was that Oscar Grant's life would be remembered and that Oscar Grant's family would see justice. Well, we fell in love. We were already in love with truth, but then we fell in love with the family. I'm always so happy to see our mother and grandmother. I'm always so happy to see Tatiana. And I'm always so happy to see everyone else in between. And to watch us grow and flower and come to a time in which many would have felt would never have been possible. My brother, Rashidullah, made a call out at one of our January the 1st gatherings that this station should be renamed the Oscar Grant Station. The body politic declared that that would just cost too much money. They said that there are no stations named after people and it's something we just cannot do. Here you got cities named after people. You got counties named after people. You got states named after people. And if you search the world, you'll find countries named after people. So what then prevents any from saying that this station ought not to be called after the name of a man who gave his blood as an innocent martyr in the drive toward justice? And that is Oscar Grant, as I close. At that time, my oldest son, who's not here with us, he's moved to Southern California. He was 15 years of age. And when we walked into the rallies and town halls, I looked back and my son, like his baby brother here, was standing right on my shoulder. His life was in jeopardy. And when he turned 16, he was accepted to attend college at UC Berkeley. Our mosque is around the corner. And shortly after the murder of Oscar Grant, you have to now understand what it meant for me involved in the planning of organizing activists to bring my son here every day and see a bullet in the ground and know that we're standing on the sacred ground and not knowing whenever he was on a bark train whether or not he would be confronted by the kind of officers that confronted Oscar on that day. So some of these, like this one, grew up town hall babies. In fact, when we stopped meeting every week, many wondered, when are we going to meet again? Because they have been reared in a life of service. They have been raised for a life of love. And with great honor, we're able to say, out of great respect for the family whose loss we could never physically imagine, but a family whose loss is our own. Now, in closing, we didn't declare in that time, say his name, we declared something very special. As we were gathering and learning of our brother's life and what caused his death, it came out of the mouth of the activist at Olivet. That could have been my son. Until eventually, Someone said, that's more than just my son. It was declared, I am Oscar Grant. And when we arrived to that first press conference, just about everyone that took the microphone decried, I am Oscar Grant. The scripture teaches us as Muslims that we cannot call ourselves a Muslim until we want for our brothers and sisters what we want for ourselves. So when our brother found what he met in Johannes Meseli, we knew that we could not sit back apathetically and pathetically hold up a cell phone and argue about what's on the TV screen. We knew, like you know, that there's some work that has to be done. Final note on the workers. One of our great workers, married into the family of Oscar. So now that makes her his auntie. My sister, who's hiding behind the speaker, 
hoping I don't point her out in the gray hat in the black uh, pants, but I didn't point her out. But my sister served as a counselor, as an aide, as a nurse, as a friend, and as a sister to Mother Wanda while we traveled up and down the highways, in the byways, in and out of a courtroom to secure justice in the murder of Oscar Grant. Please thank Sister Beatrice X, who is now the wife of Brother Cephas, or Uncle Bobby X. So I want to thank you all for this historic moment. Let us pay tribute, let us give honor, and let us show love to the family of Oscar Grant. May Allah bless and keep you all. Assalamu alaikum.